and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating geometric art and gradient lines in Illustrator. For the first example, I'm going to choose File and New and create a document 1920 by 1080 pixels in size. I'll click Create. This is a document that is wider than it is tall. I'm selecting the Pencil tool here and making sure that I don't have any fill selected. That's critical or the effect is not going to look correct. So I'm going to start by drawing some wiggly lines from one side of the artboard to the other. Now I want some plainish sort of lines with just gentle bumps in them and I want one that has a sort of loop in it. You don't want all of your lines to sort of look the same. So I'm going to do one that's got some ups and downs and I'll finish off with one that is a sort of loop. Four lines should be sufficient. We're going to create a blend of these lines, so I'll go to the Blend tool, hover over the first one and you'll see an asterisk in the bottom right corner of the mouse pointer. Click once to select that line and then the next line will have a plus sign and the next one a plus sign and the last one a plus sign. So just want to click on all four of those lines. What you see right now may not be the same as what I'm seeing, so don't worry. You'll double click on the Blend tool, select Preview so that you can see what's going on and choose Specified Steps. And now start increasing the number of steps. And as you do, you'll see that these lines are blending into each other. So you're getting some areas where the overlapping of the lines creates some very dark areas and some areas which are much lighter. Now you can experiment with how many steps you want. There's no hard or fast rule here. So I think I'm going to use about 40, so I'll click OK. At this point, you can go to the Direct Selection tool and click on any of these anchor points in these lines and just move them. So if you want to move some of these dark areas away from each other, you can locate the anchor points on the lines and just move the lines to get something even a bit more interesting. Now I'm going to settle with what I have here. But if we have a look in the Layers panel, you'll see that we've got a blend in the Layers panel, a blend and four lines. So we don't actually have all of these lines as individual objects. To do that, I'm going to make sure I have my blend selected and choose Object and then Blend and I'll choose Expand. And that gives me a group with lots of individual lines in the group. Now I'm going to apply a gradient to the stroke on these lines and I also want to blend them. So at this stage I'm just going to ungroup them. So I'll choose Object and then Ungroup. So at this point we just want a whole series of lines. Now you might be looking at this and wondering how you're going to see a gradient and you probably won't be able to see a gradient because everything's blue. So what I'm going to choose is View and I'll choose Hide Edges and that just turns off that blue colouring. These lines are still selected, we just can't see the selections and that's going to allow us to apply a gradient and actually see the result. We just need to remember to turn that setting back on later on. So I'm going to go to Swatch Libraries and go to Gradients and here are a whole series of gradients that are shipped with Illustrator. I'm choosing Sky but you can choose any set of gradients that you like. And if you don't like the sky when you get to them, you can just use these arrows to move back through some of these other gradients that are shipped with Illustrator. But as I said, I'm going to stick with Sky. So I'm going to click on one of these gradients and see that this linear gradient is now applied across my lines. Now we can tweak the gradient later on, we just have to find a gradient that we like at this point. So you can experiment with various of these gradients until you find the one that you really like. I think I'm going to settle for this one today. Now at this point the gradient is just being applied along each individual line and we're seeing sort of a build up of colour but only up to the original colour in the gradient. I would like to have these areas even a little bit darker and so I'm going to use a Multiply Blend mode because the Multiply Blend mode is going to enhance the colours where these lines are over the top of each other. So I'm going to the Appearance panel, I still have all of my lines selected. From the bottom opacity setting you'll see that there's an opacity for the fill and an opacity for the stroke. We're going to choose the opacity for the entire line. I'm going to set this to multiply and so we're getting these really nice darker areas where these lines are overlapping. So this is the before and this is the much richer, much more interesting after. Now I'm going to group these lines back again because they're going to be easier to handle that way so I'll choose Object and then Group. 
Now I just want to show you one thing because you may fall foul of this. I'm going to add a black rectangle here. So I'm going to add a rectangle the exact size of the artboard. I'm going to fill it with black and give it no stroke and I'm going to align it to the artboard. Now at the moment it's on top of everything so I'm going to place it behind everything with object arrange and center back. Now the lines are no longer visible and the reason for this is that blend mode that we applied is actually affecting the interaction of these lines as between the lines themselves but also with the rectangle underneath and multiply blend mode just means everything's turning to black. So to solve that problem, I'm going to reselect my group of lines. I'm going back to the appearance panel. I'm going back to this opacity setting, but this time the opacity setting is affecting the entire group of objects. So I'm going to click that open and there's an option here called isolate blending. And what that does is it isolates the blending to the objects within the group, but doesn't let that blending affect the grouped objects and other objects in the artboard. So this is isolating the blending to within the group and now we're able to see our lines again. So just be aware of that anytime you want to put lines like these over the top of a, for example, darker background. Now, as I said before, we finish up view and then show edges because we need to be able to see those edges when we select things in future. For the next set of lines, I'm going to show you a really interesting effect that you can create with the transform tool. I'm going to choose file and then new and just create a square document. Mine's 1200 by 1200 pixels in size. Now again, I'm going to turn off the fill here. I just want a line and I'm going to the line segment tool and I'll just draw out a line here that is somewhere starting around about the middle of the document and then just extending partway across the rest of the document. So that's the starting point for this line. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a sort of radial shape here with this line. So with it selected, I'm going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. And this is one of the most fun and really, really valuable tools in Illustrator. So we're going to start by turning preview on so that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to set the horizontal and vertical scale to 97%. So this line as it rotates around is going to get smaller and smaller. I'm going to set my angle to 29% and I'm going to show you in a minute why that's a really good setting. And then I'll set the rotation point. At the moment the rotation point is in the middle of the shape but I'm going to select the top left corner here. So it's going to rotate around a central point. And then I'm going to increase the number of copies to about 60. Now the reason why I chose 29 degrees is that it's throwing everything off a little bit. If we increase that to 30, we just get all these lines rotating on top of each other. But when we select something like 29 or 31, then everything is rotating in a more interesting manner. I might just kick my copies up one more so that I get this area filled in. So you can experiment with different values for angle and different values for copies, but you want to get a sort of filled in shape like this. And the 97%, every one of these lines is 97% of the length and width of the previous line. So you're getting this final effect. I'll click OK. Now the shape here is really just a line. When I go to the appearance panel, you'll see that there's a transform effect. So this line is just subject to a transform effect. So what I want to do is expand this shape. So I'll choose object and then expand appearance. And if we go to the layers palette, I'm just pressing F7 to get there. You'll see that we now have a series of groups. So I'm going to ungroup these objects with object ungroup and continue to do that until ungroup is no longer an option. So we just have now a series of paths. And it's time to bring in a gradient fill. So with this entire series of shapes selected, I'm going to apply a gradient. And I'm going to make sure the gradient is going on the stroke because that's all we have. We've got lines but no fills. I'm going to set this to a radial gradient. Now just a heads up, this gradient dialog is going to look a little bit different in earlier versions of Illustrator. I'm using Illustrator 2019. There's a new tool in Illustrator 2019. 
So don't be surprised if you're using an earlier version if you don't have those options. Now I'm going to press Control or Command H just to hide the handle so that we can see the effect that we've got. And because we've got a gradient that's going from black at the tips to white at the middle, we're losing sort of the middle of these lines and we're getting this really interesting sort of almost like a sparkle effect. Now you could increase the stroke weight a little bit if you wanted to, to get sort of darker shapes here. But this gradient is working really nicely. The other way around from black to white is going to look very different. But again, it might be a look that you like. It's just for me, I'm preferring this one. So there is a set of geometric lines created using a simple transformation. And then they have this really interesting radial gradient applied to them. You could take this object, for example, and make a pattern out of it. There are all sorts of things that you can do with it. It might also make an interesting element in another design. For the last design, let's create another landscape size document just so we've got plenty of room to work in. Mine's 1920 by 1080. Now I'm going to start with the rectangle tool and draw a square. So I'm holding the shift key as I draw out a square. I don't want my square to be enormous, about this size is pretty good and it can't have a fill. So I'm going to apply a rotation to this square. So I'm choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. Now for this rotation, I'm going to decrease the size of each of these squares to 95% of the previous square size. So we're going to reduce the size quite considerably. We're going to rotate around the center point and we're going to do a three degree rotation. So these squares are going to start to rotate around and to shrink. And so I'm just increasing the number of copies and you can see the effect that we're creating. And I'm going to continue to do this until pretty much I've closed up the middle of this shape. And that's probably in the region of about 100, 120 copies. Of course, we're not going to see very many of them at the very end. I've actually got 84. I'm thinking that that's probably going to be OK for this particular size rectangle. So I'll just click OK. So we've got a shape that is a really interesting sort of rotation effect just done with squares. Each one of them is 95% of the previous one and each one of them is rotated by three degrees. Now, if we want to break these squares out into individual shapes, we're going to run into a bit of a problem. So I just want to show you what that is. I'm going to make a duplicate so that we can throw out the ones that aren't going to work when we see what the problem is. I've got my shape selected, so I'll choose Object and then Expand Appearance. And if I go to the Layers panel, let's see what that's given us. It's given us a whole series of grouped objects. So let's just go and break them out of these groups and see what the remainder is. Here we have a series of compound paths. So what's happened is in expanding our shape, we ended up with filled shapes rather than shapes with a stroke on it. Now, because we can apply a gradient to a stroke, we may prefer not to be working with compound shape because in that case, what you've got is that each of these squares is actually not a stroked square. It's actually a filled shape and the shape is this line. So if we don't want compound paths to occur, then that's not the right way to expand the shape. So let's have a look at this one instead. What I'm going to do here is having made my shape convince myself that it's all looking really good, I'm going to flip the stroke and the fill. So now I can't see anything, but I know those shapes are there. Now I'm going to expand the object with Object Expand Appearance. And then I'll choose Object Ungroup until Ungroup is no longer an option. Now you'll see that I've got filled paths. Well, I've got filled paths because I've got a fill applied to it, but I can stroke those filled paths by just switching the stroke and the path. And so this time I don't have compound paths. These are squares that have a stroke around the edge. So there's a different result and it just depends on how you expand these shapes, whether you expand a stroke shape or whether you expand a filled shape and then flip the fill and the stroke after you've done that. And I think that's probably a preferable way of doing this. So now that I've got all my shapes here, I'm just going to group them back in. But this time they're just going all those paths into a single group. At this point, we can apply a gradient to those. I'm going back to my gradients and this time 
I'm probably going to choose gems and jewels. So let's just see what we've got here. Well, there's some interesting gradients here. Again, I'm going to press Ctrl or Command H so I can hide the edges and just see more clearly what's happening here. With the shape still selected, I'm going to switch across here to a radial gradient and I'm going to flip my gradient. You will probably find that you get better results with lighter areas of the gradient towards the middle. I'm actually going to pull that stop off and let's just go with these two colors. Flipping them, the result is very different and it doesn't seem to be as apparent that we've actually got a gradient on that shape, but certainly with light towards the right hand side, we're getting this really interesting look to our shape. This shape could be made into a pattern, for example, because it's a square, we can just drag and drop it straight away into the swatches panel here. So let's go and make a pattern out of that. We'll have a look at that one in a minute. But before we do that, let's grab this shape and let's flip it with object transform and we'll choose reflect. I'm going to turn preview on and I'm going to reflect it. It doesn't matter over the horizontal or the vertical. Either will be just fine. I'll click copy because the result here is that these two shapes are now flipped over the top of each other and they form a sort of floral shape. Now to be a bit neater because they're in groups, I'm going to choose object ungroup and I'm going to ungroup all of them. So that's two sets of objects and now I'm going to regroup them. Just a little bit neater in the layers palette here. This one, I'm also going to drag and drop into this swatches panel because it too can become a pattern. So let's see what we've got then. I've created a rectangle that is the size of the artboard. I'm going to turn off the stroke. I'm going to target the fill and let's have a look at the first of our patterns. Of course, we can scale this by choosing object and then transform and scale. Make sure to turn off transform objects, turn preview on so you can see what you're doing. And I'll just take this down to 50%. And you get this interesting pattern that because of the way the swirls are occurring, it actually looks like it's sort of moving. It's on an angle. It looks like a, quite a dynamic pattern. Now with this shape still selected, let's try the second pattern. And this is the more floral one. And this is the result that we're getting with that shape. Now you can always place a filled shape over the top of these. Let me just show you what I'm thinking. 1920 by 1080, another rectangle, the exact same size. Let me go and this time fill it with just a plain color. I'm going to square it up over the artboard. And now we can blend this color filled layer into the object underneath. We would just go to the opacity setting for this and for example, select something like screen. And now we have an interesting interaction between this color filled shape over the top of a pattern filled shape underneath. Now it's also possible to do other things gradient wise to this shape. In Illustrator CC 2019, there is, as I said, this new gradient tool. So we could come here and choose a freeform gradient for this shape. And there are anchor points here that we could now set to different colors. So we could add a darker color at this corner of the shape. We could come down here and add a different color. So we could go perhaps a little bit more into the yellows in this area and then come over here perhaps even move the point and adjust the color here. Maybe we're going into a slight blue area here. And again, because we've got this blending, this underlying blend mode, the colors in this gradient filled shape are interacting with the pattern that is underneath. Now I'm just going to wind that back because if you're working in an earlier version of Illustrator, you don't have that feature. But let me just show you what you could do. I've got this top rectangle selected. Let me just make sure in my last panel that I've got this orange rectangle selected. I'm going to choose object and then create gradient mesh. And I'm going to do a four by four mesh because that's fine for right now. I'll click OK. So we now have the top orange shape divided up in a four by four grid. So when I hover with the white arrow tool, the direct selection tool over one of these points, I can select it. I'm actually going to shift select another one as well. 
Then I'm going to the eyedropper tool and you can see that it's shortcut key as eye. That's going to help you in just a minute. And I'm going to target a different color for these two points in the gradient mesh. So now let's go and select a different set of points. So I'll select this one over here and shift select one of these on the edge and maybe one over here. And then I'll go and press the letter I to target the eyedropper tool and go to a darker color for these other points. So you can apply different gradient colors to this gradient mesh using the gradient mesh tool in earlier versions of Illustrator. And these points can be dragged around. So I've got a yellow point here so I can move it across so I can create very similar gradients to the kind of gradients that we can create with the new tool in Illustrator CC 2019. But you're doing it with an earlier version of Illustrator using a gradient mesh because you don't have accessibility to the new gradient feature. So there are some ways of creating gradient line art in Illustrator. I really hope that you've enjoyed learning these Illustrator techniques. Please let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.